Okay, so this is about, it's a seminar, how to start a restaurant. It'll be at a panel. And the most important question, one of the first ones a lot of people can ask is, if you had to do this all over again, knowing everything you know, um, would you just change anything? See, the, what, what would you do differently if you had the chance to start again? Is the actual question. So that's the question, what yes. would I do differently if I had a chance to do it all over if again? If you had a chance to do it all over again, what would you do differently? Uh, there's a second part to that, uh, which is what skills have you had to develop? Oh, that's a different question. Let's stick with okay. the first one. All right, so, so start again with the first, first question. Sure, the first question is, uh, what would you do differently if you had to, a chance to start again? That's a that's a tough one to answer because you know it's all been a it's been a journey a journey of learning and getting better. What would I do differently if I had a chance to do it all over again? If anything, what I would do differently is maybe get more training, get more training, be better prepared, maybe get some experience in a restaurant. Uh, I learned kind of like from the school of hard knocks, actually working in the restaurant, making my mistakes in my own business. If I could have done something differently, um, I have no regrets. But if I could have gotten a job maybe in a restaurant prior to this. Just to kind of like refresh my memory in terms of what was required, and uh, the learning curve would have been a lot less. But you know what? I really have no regrets whatsoever. Everything again, it's been a journey, and everything was meant to happen as it was supposed to happen. Me learning what I needed to learn, precisely where I needed to learn it. But um, if anything, just train it. But you're never, you're never completely prepared for anything. You know, you can read a, a hundred books on how to open up a restaurant, speak to a thousand people, attend seminars, panels, you name it. But until you actually start your own business and you're actually working in your business. You're never really going to know sure. what you need to know completely. You, you use the word training. The training, are you referring to training in a restaurant or training in the business sense or training in what way? If you had to define yeah, training. training in a restaurant, learning in a restaurant. I was a busboy 20 years ago for a couple of years and that was the end of my restaurant experience. And even getting business training as well. Getting business training, business coaching, just to prepare me to be a business person and think the, along the lines of business people. Business people. If, you know what? If something does come to mind. If I could, if I could do something over again, looking back, rewind the clock, having learned what I've learned, I would say, um, hire slower and fire faster. Mm. Hire, hire slower and fire faster. I was very, very quick to hire and slow to fire, and that caused, uh, that created a lot of bringing in the wrong people mm -hmm. and keeping on the wrong people. Great, great. This next question might be a little similar. It's about skills. What skills have you had to develop that you did not anticipate would be involved in owning a restaurant? I think the skills I had to develop that I didn't anticipate in running a restaurant would be uh, a lot of marketing. A lot of marketing. You know, how to market this restaurant and how to distinguish ourselves in our marketing rather than traditional prints or whatever else, uh, mailings that other people are doing out there. Social media skills are really, really big. I had to learn that. A lot of people quite haven't embraced yet because they're afraid of social media, they're afraid of computers, they don't quite see a payback right away. But I, I, I did see something along those lines and I invested time and energy in myself in learning those things. Another skill would be managing people. I never had a team of people I had to manage. So that came, uh, that was quite bumpy as well. You know, that was a skill I had to learn, to take courses and how to get the most I needed from my people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, without losing too many friends along the way, or people. Okay. So managing okay. people. Managing people, okay. Um, next question. What or who contributed to the successful launch and development of your restaurant? So that what or who contributed to the successful launch of the develop and development of your restaurant? So you could answer that. Any way like? Sure, well I think number one, it all begins with me, wow. you know, it all begins with me, my success is the end result of my work and likewise it applies to my partner as well, Two, you know, I'm very dynamic and energetic, so is my partner, we both teamed up together and went forth with a vision, so we're going to make this happen and we just did everything possible, so a lot of courage, a lot of discipline and a lot, a lot of determination to make things happen, mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it begins with us. But you know, no man is an island, and nobody can create anything by themselves without getting in, getting people involved to assist one. So a lot of the organization, there are a lot of organizations out there that are very, very instrumental in assisting us. Mm -hmm. uh, the Brooklyn Business Library, Business Outreach Outreach Center, where is, where, which is where I'll be speaking that day. 
they loaned us money. There were a lot of panels, a lot of workshops, Weibo, another organization, a lot of people out there. And these aren't just names of organizations, there are people involved. Relationships that we encountered and made with the individuals at Bach, with the business library, with uh, Weibo and other organizations out there that that were instrumental in teaching us, guiding us, leading us to the next person, the, the, the next situation that needed to happen in order for us to be successful. But the fact that George and I were willing to be courageous and not be, and not play small, but play big, even when there were very, very dark moments of where is this going to come from, how is this going to happen, where somebody easily can just give up. Somebody, it's very easy to give up, but we, we were tenacious enough to say, let's just keep moving forward, even if we don't see a, a, a ray of light anywhere, let's just keep moving forward until we count for something. Yeah, great. So the library, Bach, Weibo, uh, and numerous, numerous individuals, even bankers who turned us down, even real estate agents and landlords who turned us down when we were pursuing space and money. We learned a lot from these people. So everyone, you know, we're grateful to everyone. Great, great. Um, next question we have is, uh, what things have you done in running your business that were integral in its, in its success? Like, how do you bring in clients? one of those questions. So what things have you done in running your business that were integral in its business? Mm. Well, I think, you know, tough one. No, I think social media is a big one. Mm -hmm. Social media is a big one. The, the, the use, the relentless use of every aspect of social media, seeing where we can put our name out there and how often we can put it out there and reach as many people as possible. Another thing might be also the, tra you know, the training of the staff, <coughs> having a mission for the restaurant having a vision mm -hmm. underlined by core values that represent who I am and who George is. Mm -hmm. From this springs forth what we're looking to create and then making sure that our staff is on board and they completely understand what they're buying into when they're working for this restaurant that has a mission. The mission being elevating the status and awareness of the Latino cuisine and beverages in, in a warm and welcoming, vibrant environment where culture is offered. Culture and uh, just warm hospitality is offered. So marketing, training, social media use. And consistency is in, with any restaurant or any business. Consist consistency in, in training, consistency in quality, consistency in the marketing. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking of questions already to add on here. I have two, but let's finish the ones that are here. Uh, what is the hardest part of owning a restaurant? I think, uh, I think uh, the hardest part of owning a restaurant I think comes in stages. It really all depends. Uh, when you first open it up, the hardest part is trying to get people in the door. That's the challenging part, and making sure that your staff is, when you do manage to get people in the door, that your staff is knowledgeable, well-trained, and hospitable enough to know how to get that person to come back. That's one of the toughest challenges. It's very easy, so many business owners open up businesses, and they're doing everything. Because they can't trust, they don't train, they can't let go. They're doing everything. Mm -hmm. Because the hardest part is making sure. You, know, you don't want to be stuck doing all these roles. You want to be able to eventually get to the point you're working on your business, not in your business. Mm -hmm. You won't grow that way. You know, so that initially the, the toughest part is getting people through the door, making sure that your staff is well trained to sell and market. What was the other question? You know, oh, well, there's a little. Yeah, if you can remind me of that, just again, I felt like I had another response to that. Oh, the, it's, the what is the part. hardest part of owning a restaurant? Okay, so I mentioned it comes in stages. I think next, the hardest part is maybe um, the amount of work. That, that people underestimate go into running a restaurant. People have no idea how much work is involved. You know, you don't just open your doors and you know put out food. There's a lot of work involved to make sure you don't run out of food, making sure that your employees are happy, making sure that everyone's getting paid, making sure the bills are paid, making sure that people don't get sick from your food, making sure that you've got the right people, that your employees are showing up on time. There's just so much work involved. People have no idea how much work is involved in running a restaurant. So um, once I think that hits, that starts to hit you. Every time you turn around, there's just no rest. A restaurant owner's hours are pretty much 24-7. At any given point, you need to show up for your business. And hence why I think so many restaurants fail. It's just so demanding. Mm -hmm. And so many people, you have to be able to give. You give everything that, that you got to that business. Great, great. Um, what factors or issues... Oh, wait, if I oh, can answer another thing right that's coming up. I think, I, again, I mentioned this stage is another component. Once you decide, oh, and then getting managers, another part is trusting when you finally decide you're going to hire managers to make sure that you can train these people appropriately and that you can trust that they're going to do the right job holding them accountable to expectations that's one of the toughest parts right there is being able to pull back so you can focus on other things and entrusting your business that's, that's going to be well run at the same time you know holding everyone accountable checking them to make sure that everything's good 
another challenge that can come to a successful restaurant owner or business owner um, that can be tough is considerations for expansion. What do you do if you're a successful restaurant? What do you do next? When mm -hmm. opportunities start coming your way, opportunities start coming your way. We're recording. We're right back. Yeah. Uh, and you don't know which ones are the most appropriate. You know, which thing it will involve reaching outside your network and getting experts involved to assist you again. Challenges that come with being successful. These are luxury challenges. What do I do next? Where do I go next? Do I open up another one? Same concept, different concept. Do I get partners involved? Do I do I remain happy with this one mm -hmm. restaurant and focus on my personal life? Um, another frustrating or challenging part can be creating a balance between home life and business. It's very, very challenging. The two are often blurred. It's very difficult not to bring the restaurant home at mm -hmm. night time. It's very challenging. So these are all things that are you know, okay. on a day's work. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what factors, issues, would you encourage someone thinking about starting a restaurant to consider? What factors, issues would you encourage someone thinking about starting a restaurant to consider? Yeah, number one, um, are you focused? Are you disciplined? Are you prepared to give it your all? You have to be absolutely disciplined <coughs> with your money, with your habits, with your time, being able to prioritize your time. Uh, and just discipline, really. There are a lot of people that, uh, again, they think it's going to be easy breezy or they underestimate how much work it's going to be, that you have to be able to pull away from things that, and prioritize what's really important in your life and what isn't. What, what must you stop doing in order for you to focus on your business? Just discipline. discipline. Yeah, being disciplined. And another thing, actually, another thing to consider how's your credit score? Mm. You know, how are you with paying bills? What's your relationship with money? That's a good point. You know, if you're if you're not good at saving money, you're going to have trouble running a successful business. If you don't know how to allocate resources, a lot of restaurant owners they open up a restaurant, money comes in right away, and guess where all that money's going? In their own pockets. They get very excited by all this money coming in. They don't have the discipline to say, you know what, I get paid last, if I get paid at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything else comes first. The bills come first, the landlord comes first, the light comes first, my employees come first, I come last. If you don't have the discipline to manage money, you're going to have to find it somewhere. You figure out a way to do that. Mm -hmm. So right there, that's another one. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. Money and, uh, I think you already answered this question, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Yeah. Um, what were some of the most difficult stages and steps in the startup stage? So what was the most difficult things in the beginning to start up? But I think you may have touched upon it earlier, but that's the question. You know, two of them, two, the two biggest obstacles, um, and maybe three. Number one, finding a space. Space. If you don't have a successful business um, already, you're just starting out from scratch. A lot of people aren't going to take, well, at least we found that a lot of people wouldn't take a chance on us. Landlords and brokers, because we did not have a successful record of opening up a, a restaurant or a business, and we all know how the, the failure rate for restaurants. So that's very, very challenging getting a landlord or a, a real estate agent to believe in us. Quite often, we're being outbid by other established restaurant tours. Manhattan restaurants were looking to open up a Brooklyn restaurant, and we'd be all looking at the same space. And of course, guess who gets it? The, the established restaurant tour versus us. So that was one of the biggest challenges. The other big challenge, of course, was finding money, getting money. Obtaining money. If you don't have the money to begin with, you're going to have to do a lot of asking around. Uh, you know, they say, look, look to the three F's first. Your friends, your fa friends, family, and fools. Those are the first people you should be chasing after when it comes to money before you go to the banks. Friends, family, and what? Fools. Fools. Okay. <laughs> Who are the fools? <laughs> Whoever's willing to give you the money. Exactly. Whoever's willing to give you money. You know? okay. Good luck. Good luck. Hope you get it back. Uh, and then, um, yeah, but getting banks to finance a restaurant is very, very challenging. We have, you know, we lucked out. And you know, you know our story. We have the margarita story. We lucked out, but it's very, very challenging. So finding a space and finding money, very, very challenging. It, it's not impossible. It can be done. You have to be very, very creative about it. In our case, you know, aside from that margarita story, uh, we took out credit card loans and we uh, took out student loans. We applied for school, took one class, took the money, and dropped out. You know, and dropped out right around the time that the restaurant was opening up so that we had money because you default on your loan. Sure. As soon as you drop out, you default and you have to start paying it back. So we made sure that they, we dropped out so we didn't go back to the semester the moment the restaurant opened. So they were creative and there were micro lenders out there as well. People that will lend you money but at a, a bit higher rate mm -hmm. than what a bank might lend you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Those are the uh, end of questions there. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, to, just to the uh, one or two out to you, maybe even three. 
Um, fear of failure prevents a lot of people from opening a business. And some people are really fearful of putting their whole life savings into a business and have uh, you know, the, the, the carpet taken off or they lose the shirt off their back. And that fear prevents people from even starting. What would you tell a business owner who's 